Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Patreon request. Now, um, if you'd like a request, you can join us on Patreon or YouTube members and we'll get a video done up just for you. This one is talking about how to build an army in Warhammer Age of Sigmar and some simple steps to sort of build an army that's going to function well in the game as sort of an all-comers army, just something you can learn the game with. And so in this video, we're going to go through explaining like the Force Org and all of that, how that works, and also how we sort of consider building a list or indeed how I consider building a list for play in a game. With that said, let's get cracking on and get straight into it. And so this is a force organization chart. You'll find this particular one for the Contest of Generals inside the main Age of Sigmar core rules. You can also find them in the General's Handbook every season. Now, this is a points limit. At the top here, this is the maximum number of points that you can have inside your army. You cannot have 1,505, you cannot have 1,525 points in a 1,500-point game. That would suddenly become a 2,000-point army. However, you do not need to spend all 750 points, and you do not need to spend all 3,000 points in those size games. In fact, there are benefits called triumphs that you get when you are under points of your opponent. So potentially leaving some is maybe even a valid strategy in itself. Now the next part here with the leader, battle line, behemoth, artillery, and the spell and invocation, reinforced unit, and understrength units, and allied units are all how we do our force organization. Now you can see all these numbers are different for the depending on points value. And for the purpose of this, we'll look at the 2000 point column. You can see we must have one leader unit in our 2000 point army. You'll be able to find which units are leader based on the back of your battle tome in your pitch battle profiles of the battle tome. Now, you must have one, and you can have a maximum of six different heroes at 2,000 points. For battle line, you must have three plus. So you must have three. This doesn't have to be any size uh, particular. It can be three minimum sized units. It can be three maximum sized units, whatever you wish to use. So you always have a minimum amount of battle line and always must include one hero regardless of which point size you are playing. The number of battle line units obviously decreases or increases based on whether you're playing more or less than 2,000 points. You then have restrictions on behemoth and artillery units and on your reinforced units as well. These are all the same. You can see you can have one, 0 to 1 of each of behemoth artillery and reinforced units. Uh, 0 to 2, then 0 to 3, and 0 to 4 on all three of them at 2,000 points. 0 to 6 in case you're playing at 3,000. This means you don't have to have any, but you can have a maximum of said number. And the spells are much the same, where you don't have to include any in your army, but you have a maximum number of them in your force. Under strength units, you can only have one for each type of that unit in your army. And allies, this is another interesting part that's a little bit different than anything we've talked about so far. You can have a maximum number of points of allies in your army based on the size of your army. Allies are units coming from another battle tome. This does not include coalition allies, which are special rules given to certain units and do not take up these points. And so at a 2000 point game, you can have 400 points of your army worth a battle line. This is not on top of the 2,000, but rather part of the 2,000. Now you can, once again, not have 405. That is not 400 points. You cannot have 425. However, you do not have to spend all 400. You can indeed spend 175 points of your allies and then the rest in your normal 2,000-point army. The bottom part here is the recommended table size. And if you're looking for great tabletop mats, uh, Mithras Games is our channel sponsor and does an amazing variety of different mats for all of the sizes mentioned here. You see the different game sizes on the 750 point to 1000 point, 30 by 44, and then 44 by 60 recommended for those larger games, and 44 by 90 for the 3000. With the 1000 and 2000 point games, 2000 I recommend 44 by 60, and 1000 I recommend 30 by 44. Now, on the bottom here is the recommended number of terrain features on the board, 4, 8, and 12, depending on the size of the game. I always recommend maybe going a little bit more. Uh, 8 is probably the number of large pieces, but a little bit of scatter terrain on top of that and some small little bits and pieces here and there really will help make your battlefield an amazing place to have your battles. After you've looked at Force Org, before you start really building your army, it's important to think about and consider how you want the army to play and what you want the army to do on the tabletop. 
And so this can be a mixture of different things as well. You could want a shooting army, a magic army, a combat army, an army that's got lots of monsters, or an army that's got lots of infantry. Your army could be extremely character focused, or you could be extremely monster focused. You could want your army to tell a particular story in the game, or you could want it to be from a particular part of the mortal realms and enable you to sort of bring that part of the mortal realms to life. You could indeed want an allied force to bring in as many allies into your force as possible. All of these are completely valid, and it's really important that you set this sort of groundwork on what you want to do. We've got videos up on the channel. I'm going to have more videos up on the channel that will really go into talking about what armies are good at what particular styles of play, and maybe you can find ones that mix and match doing what you want to do. Hopefully these videos are helpful with deciding this sort of thing, um, but there really is, this is the first sort of decision, deciding what you want to do. Now, you could disregard all this. If you love the models for an army and you can tell a story with them on the tabletop, then that's fantastic. But it is worth thinking about, I want an army that shoots, so maybe Blades of Corn isn't an army for you because they don't have much shooting. Maybe you would rather an army that can do combat like Blades of Corn, but add in some shooting as well. So maybe you might prefer something like Stormcast Eternals, for example. Now, after we talk about our playstyle and stuff like that, it really is time to start thinking about what you want to include in your army. Now, I'm going to talk about hammers, anvils, or the three places of power. This is something I use when I build my army list for games, and how this works. In a 2,000 point army, I like to have three major points of power within my army. These three major points of power allow the army to fight on multiple fronts and distribute your power across the table. You've got to think about it. If you have all your power in one single unit, that unit needs to do a lot of work. Where if you have three great units instead of one amazing unit, you can instead spread those great powers across the table and even at times use them to gang up on an opponent that has got an amazing unit and distribute your power better across. A lot of the games of Warhammer Age of Sigma have three or more objectives on the table, so having at least three places of power will allow you to dominate the majority of objectives on the table if your things are going your way, and also enabling you to get the most points, because let's not forget, a lot of the scenarios use the objective scoring of one, two, and more, so being able to control three in a lot of scenarios will be enough to get you the more. Now, when you have these three places of power, they can be a mixture of hammers or anvils, or indeed be all or one. This really should have been decided in the step four. If you're wanting to play a much more defensive army, then you're going to have more anvils, than, more anvils than hammers. And if you're wanting to play a really aggressive army that's going to be up in your opponent's face, you're going to have more hammers than anvils. You might have a mix, or you might go all in on one or the other. To explain what I mean by these, hammers are units that go out and beat up other units. I wrote beast here, but, you know, same thing. Um, anvils are units that are hard, if not impossible, for your opponent to take down. Some great examples of hammers in the game at current. Hammers don't need to always be, I guess, a straight up combat fighter. You can have a hammer for, say, a unit like the Bloodstalkers, which are a shooting unit from Daughters of Cain are a hammer unit as they provide loads of damage, while a, another hammer might be something like Stormcast Eternals or Retributors, as they're a combat unit that can do a lot of damage. Anvils, on the other hand, are units that are hard to take down, and they're not always hard to take down in the same way. You could have an anvil like, say, Plague Bearers, which are minus one to hit, or you could have an anvil like Stormcast Eternals uh, Vindicate, Vindictors, which have a really good armor save. You could as well be, say, something like a anvil of a anvil of zombies which have just a lot of models inside the unit and there's so many of them they're going to be hard to take down that many that is an anvil but a different type of anvil and so this is really important thinking of those three major places of power and those three major pieces you want these can be any units you want them to be just pick three of your units for now that you really want to be the central focal points of your army Next, we have support units. Now that we've picked those three major pieces that you want to focus your army around, it's worth having a look at some support units to give them some extra oomph. Now, support units can either be heroes or indeed units. Normally, it's a lot of heroes that provide out a lot of buffs, but there are certain units that are support units that will work alongside your current pieces. These units will provide buffs, protection, other similar things to your army. Now, they could also provide debuffs to your enemy with these support pieces. So, a piece that's providing, say, a minus one to hit penalty, but actually puts that on the enemy unit that's going to charge your main piece, 
is still a support unit. It's just supporting by inflicting a negative or a debuff on your opponent. It is the same as providing, say, a negative one to hit on your unit uh, when your opponent attacks you. That is just buffing you, but giving you a debuff that your opponent suffers. Protection in the form of ward saves or bonus armor is all good. These are just really useful pieces and useful things to give to your units. You also find sometimes you can get extra special rules uh, that will be generated either by spells, prayers, or other abilities across multiple models. When you start looking for these support pieces to provide support for your main three pieces of power in your army, keywords are extremely important and would be the first place to look. Let's have a look and say we look at a unit of Blackout Corsairs as one of our main units. They have a keyword in Cities of Sigma called Scourge Privateers. They then pair well with a Blackout Fleetmaster who affects Scourge Privateers unit with his command ability. So this is a good support unit for our Black Art Corsairs. It's important, just go have a look at those keywords and find those similar keywords on War Scrolls of heroes and units that you've picked as your main pieces of power, and then combine them, and they'll generally give you some good ideas of where you can go from there. Lastly, we want to look at utility units for the army. These are units you generally use to fill in your army. First of all, depending on the style of armor, you may want to look at some screens. Screens are units you put in front of your units, your main units, and your support units to protect them from your enemy. This is generally done by placing them in thin lines in front of your opponent's army, stretched out as much as you can, so your main unit doesn't have to receive the charge and can in fact counter charge from this, uh, your opponent's units thanks to the screens screens also can zone out areas if your opponent has the ability to deep strike units on the table uh, bring them in from reserve the graveyards from the heavens whatever um, being able to have these screens across the table pushing out and stopping your opponent come within nine inch of your main units is really useful on that point, bait units are another unit that really is useful. These are units that your opponent thinks are your main pieces or are your main support pieces, but are used to draw your opponent in and leave these units out of position, prime for a counterattack of your own. This can be done by including maybe a cheap monster unit that you can buff with your support pieces, but it's not the main one you're going to buff. Instead, throw it out, put it out, out exposed, draw your opponent in with a charge, sacrifice said unit, but then take off your opponent's own unit with yours in a counterattack. Objective grabbers are really useful, and these and screens can generally be the same thing. Objective grabbers, generally, you want them to be fast moving, have access to either flyer or indeed teleports. Um, and these are units you're going to have in your army that will always enable you to take unoccupied objectives on the table, forcing your opponent to have to leave units on those objectives. By doing such a thing, your opponent is now having to keep units on objectives and they can't be used to influence the battlefield. Lastly, contingency units. Now, these are units that are either backups to your support units or your main pieces. They'll never be your main pieces or your support units, but what they do is maybe give you access to a plan B if something goes wrong. And it should be said that these four points here as well can all be the same unit or can be at least a couple of these jobs. Say you've got a unit of something on the table, let's say a unit of prosecutors for your Stormcast Eternals. They can receive some nice buffs from the rest of your Stormcast Eternals uh, buffing units and they can be objective grabbers with their really fast movement. They can be bait and then you can throw them out and your opponent will try to destroy them. They are Stormcast so they're going to be annoying to deal with and they can also screen out thanks to their good disperse formation rules as well. They're a really great unit that takes all four parts of this. So when looking for units, you want to really try and figure out and see if you can fit in a few of these things alongside your army, alongside your main hammers, anvils and supports, and then bring these in. I hope this video has been helpful, and if you'd like any more ideas on how to build an army, let us know in the comments below. Well that's it for the end of the video, we hope you enjoyed, if you did please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already you can come and join our discord server and come chat with me and other members of our fine little community over there, you'll find a link in the description of the video. Lastly if you'd like to help support the channel you can do so by going and joining either our Patreon or YouTube members, both of them have descriptions and links in the video's description uh, and 
we would like to give a shout out to everyone who does support via Patreon and YouTube members. Thanks to our Patreons, Christian Weir, James Soren, Greenskins Gaming, AJC, Kenny Lowe, Outer and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Q Dynamic, Agu, Anthony B, Anton Nielsen, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, and Samuel. And thanks to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Chris Rollis, Ronya, Vinny, Lock Lorick, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Revenar, Wolfric Nick, Broken Shelf, and Ariana Edwards. Lastly, a special shout out to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for our channel, and to X Morphic, who does all the background work on our Discord server. Thank you all for watching once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.